Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with David Kadekel from Pharma Drug. Now, Pharma Drug's a really interesting story because just this week they announced that they had filed a US provisional patent for a manufacturing method for biosynthetic pharmaceutical grade cocaine. Now, a big problem right now in the world is fentanyl, and the idea here is to try to come up with a solution for countries that are introducing safe supply programs to try to assist people who are working towards getting off illicit drugs. So with that being said, Pharma Drug believes that they could play a role in combating substance abuse and addiction. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. David, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. So it's the first time uh, we've had anyone from Pharma Drug on The Daily Dive. Can you give us a high level overview of Pharma Drug and what the company does? Yeah, sure, Steve. So Pharma Drug at its heart is a pharmaceutical company. Uh, historically, it was involved and still is involved in the repurposing of drugs, uh, one of which is seferenthine, uh, currently approved to, for use in Japan. Um, Pharma Drug is presently uh, looking to start phase one and potentially phase two clinical trials, uh, both in Australia and in the US. And secondly, uh, recently, in fact, just this morning, uh, Pharma Drug announced um, its press release in the applications of uh, biosynthesis um, in, in the certain pharmaceutical manufacture um, of, of illegal substances, this one being in uh, cocaine, which is a highly complicated uh, molecule uh, to produce, especially pharmaceutically and through GMP standards um, in a biosynthetic manner. So you've just been appointed chairman of the company. What can you tell us about your background? How, how did you end up here? Sure. So um, myself, I have over 20 years of experience in pharmaceuticals and biotechnology. Um, in fact, I started my career working um, at several different issuers, all within in pharma and life sciences more broadly. And for the past six to seven years, I've been all capital markets and finance driven. Um, so very heavily focused uh, within the pharma sector throughout my career uh, and, and did a doctorate as well. Uh, and an MBA um, quite some time ago now. Last week, Securedos indicated that it's finalizing biosynthetic formulations for production. And now this week, you've announced a synthetic version of cocaine as your first formulation for production. What can you tell us? Yeah, so um, historically, uh, there are a number of drugs, uh, both in Canada and globally, that have uh, what's called safe supply. So in other words, the pharmaceutical manufacturer um, is very pinpointed accurate. Uh, cocaine, on the other hand, um, is not. So unfortunately, um, substance abuse is a widespread problem with this particular drug. And at the end of the day, those uh, unfortunately using the product um, can also have, have other issues, including morbidity and mortality, uh, just because of the, the lethal substances that uh, can and often are intertwined with the drug itself. So the point of biosynthesis is really to allow the biosynthetic manufacturer um, of this drug, cocaine, um, in a way uh, that is uh, consistent, pure, and highly cost-effective. What markets can this synthetic drug be sold into? Well, I mean, we, we presently would need to get, pharma drug would need to get approvals uh, from various uh, regulatory health uh, organizations, uh, both in Canada and potential uh, potentially globally. But what I can tell you is that according to the Canadian Center for Substance Use and Addiction, um, cocaine in and of itself um, uh, produces $4.2 billion uh, in harm in Canada annually. Um, and that's really because of the lack of a supply chain involved. And so this is where biosynthesis comes in and the ability to produce this uh, drug um, uh, through a very consistent and pure uh, mechanism. So what that could mean is that because we, Pharma Drug is also uh, submitting a patent um, in the production um, of the drug, this could uh, mean a number of different uh, things for the for Pharma Drug as a, a revenue generator, whether that be for the transfer of intellectual property, both in Canada and globally, um, or even um, out licensing uh, this technology as well, uh, which we hope uh, in the future will allow for a significant revenue generation uh, opportunity for the company. So fentanyl has become a major problem globally with illicit drug use. What should governments do to combat this? Well, that's a good question, Steve, because this is where we believe that pharma drug could have uh, a, a potential solution 
in the biosynthetic uh, creation uh, of, of the drug, where um, fentanyl and all other lethal substances can be entirely avoided uh, through the pharmaceutical and GMP manufacture of the product. I do want to mention that pharma drug does not condone uh, the abuse of drugs in any way, shape, or form. And in fact, harm reduction for abusers should be the primary uh, target uh, for these for these individuals. But that said, unfortunately, for for a, a substance, um, somebody with a substance abuse who engages uh, in illicit cocaine use, to your point, uh, Steve, uh, fentanyl uh, can be a deadly substance uh, within the mix. And so this is where biosynthesis um, can solve the problem uh, directly for that. So you mentioned that this manufacturing method could produce cheap pharmaceutical grade cocaine at scale. Is it too early to provide a cost target? Yeah, I think so. We're still working on um, what the scalability looks like um, and and what overall the technology is going to look like, just from a more of a volume perspective. And that's really going to come from what the demand is, both uh, from Canada and globally. So it is quite premature to talk about uh, the cost basis at this point. Can you tell us about the process of getting an application to the Therapeutic Goods Administration for your phase one study in Australia? Sure. That's an entirely different program uh, with pharma drug, and that is through uh, our partner, say, Ryo Therapeutics. Um, and this is a very interesting program. In fact, one in which I initially joined the company back in 2021. Um, and this is a, a drug called Seferenthine. Seferenthine has been uh, approved for usage in Japan for various oncologies for over 70 years now. So um, having a, a drug like seferenthine approved in a, in a first world market is very important uh, for pharma drugs uh, purposes. And what pharma drug is in the process of doing is submitting uh, an application for uh, phase one and potentially phase two uses of its uh, seferenthine product, which is a more uh, bioavailable uh, enterically coated pill um, to both Australia. You, you mentioned Australia, so Australia for the Therapeutic Goods Administration, the TGA, but also for the US uh, and the FDA. And specifically, uh, what pharma drug is targeting is through multiple oncologies uh, and also infectious diseases. So this could have uh, it could be a multi therapeutic agent for a range of different conditions uh, within those uh, therapeutic areas. All right. Well, David, thanks so much for hopping on here. This is a very interesting story, first of its kind here in Canada. Um, and uh, please keep coming back on here in the future as the story develops so we can keep uh, hearing about how everything's going, go, going with the company. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate your time. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everyone.